Hi folks, welcome to the show today. It's Sea Run Trout in the Derwent. We have organised for the doyen of trout fishing in this state to take us out. I think we're in pretty good hands. We'll probably catch about a 22 pounder. You're going to get wet, you're going to get the boat off. Get wet. Come on, get wet. Shut up. Oh, wet. He's got plenty on that. <laughs> there you are, ladies and gentlemen. Southern Bluefin Tuna. Oh. <laughs> And that is the biggest salmon I've ever caught. Happy. Hold on. Folks, well, this is a vaguely recognisable vista to some of you. It is, in fact, the Derwent River. Another recognisable feature of today's show is Andrew Large from Spot On the Fishing Connection. Andrew, you are a great man, a doyen, the only person who knows anything about fishing in the Derwent. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. Today, we're looking at sea run trout. What's the procedure? Today's procedure will be uh, basically drift spinning sort of down a, down a windy shore, um, looking for trout that could be feeding up along the rocky banks. Um, we'll, we'll sort of target some recognised uh, feeding areas and uh, hopefully catch a fish or two. OK, now tell us a little bit about the sea run trout. What's the difference between a sea run trout and a lake trout or a river trout? Basically a lake trout is uh, landlocked whereas a, a sea run trout isn't. He, he's spawned in fresh water, grows up in uh, brackish water and then makes a decision to whether to stay in the brackish stroke fresh water or move down further into the salt areas. You are unbelievable. A genius, folks. We are blessed on the program to ha today to have someone of this immense knowledge. It will be very, very, very edifying, this program, I assure you. Well, we were just drifting along. If you look out here, you can see the Bowen Bridge. You and all of a sudden, down. I'll just move out of the way here. All of a sudden, uh, casting, 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 not a lot happening. We had had a follow. And I'll just lead him into the net. Oh, gently, gently, gently. Not a bad fish, that. Not a bad fish. Now, Andrew Large, is that our sea run trout? That certainly is a sea run trout. Alright. I'd well, say he looks to be about uh, and two and a half, two and three quarter pounds. And he's certainly giving a pretty good account of himself. I would say, do you think these fish go better than a um, the equivalent size lake or river trout? I think, I think it depends on the fish, but I think on average the uh, sea runners do fight better. They're on better food. Yep. Um, obviously, the uh, nutrient enriched oceans provide a, a vast array of food that they can feed on and they build up a lot of strength. And this bloke's still having a bit of a go. He doesn't like the look of your net, mate. So there you go. All right, well, you have proved to be a genius, Largy. You've done very well, mate. We'll hook him out of the net. Uh, get him out of there. Andrew Hart, I can tell you folks, is not happy. He is not happy. And there you go. Sea run brown trout. Good to eat? Very, very nice to eat. And I think you'll be pleased with him. What I am pleased about, it's just starting to rain. All right, I'll go and sit in the cabin. The next fish you'll see will come from the rod of Andrew Hart. My work here is done. Righto folks, well Nick is motoring us back up the shoreline nice and slowly so we don't scare any fish away. Mate, I'm going to change lures. I'm not entirely happy with mine. I think that's the reason I didn't catch the fish. Why did Nick's lure catch a fish? It was like that, I suppose. It was like that. Um, I'd actually suggest this one. It's very similar in size to the uh, pretty fish that our local sea runners chase. It's a nice natural colour. It's got a little bit of silver on it. 
which I think will probably um, it, uh, rival Nick's. Sharp hooks too, and I, I guess it's a sort of an old school looking lure. It look, looks like something your granddad might have had. It is. It's actually a um, very old minnow pattern, and it works very, very well and has become uh, synonymous with the Derwent River. Has it? And what about colours? What about colours for sea runners? Colours keep it nice and natural. They're very un unlikely to take a, a brightly coloured lure, like a bright pink or orange. Um, black and silvers, brown and silvers, and green and silver seems to be the guy, like the ones I'm holding here. You are an absolute genius. Do you know Thanks, that? It's, it's an honour. It's an epic oh, I feel humble. All right, well, since I caught a fish, I've been actually relegated to the boat driving position until Andrew catches one. We're actually on the other side of the Derwent and we're not drifting it down it as easily as we were. The wind's actually pushing us offshore a little bit. So when we're doing this sort of fishing, it's pretty important that you can get to where the fish are. And in this case, that's right in hard up on the rocks. So it doesn't hurt to have someone driving the boat. Interestingly enough here, we've also got a wind lane, which is just pushing up just off the shore, about 20 or 30 yards off the shore. So that's also another feature that you can look for when you're fishing. The, that actually is a concentration of food, so you get bait fish, you get bigger fish, it follows on. So it's pretty important that you're in the, in the right spot. Now, we're in the right spot. The only thing now is waiting for Hardy to catch a fish. How you going, mate? Got one? Got a fish yet, mate? Oh, here's one. Yeah. Awesome. It's a good fish. <laughs> it's a good fish. <laughs> I saw him, I just saw a, a bit of a boil out there, I was just casting into the shore, new little spot here, it's a bit calmer in here, and I saw him come and he was chasing it and I saw him grab it, and this is a very good fish, this is a good fish, this is far bigger than Nick's, it uh, was on one of those little old lures that uh, that Andrew suggested I try, what are they called Andrew? No, they're actually just a local minnow pattern. A local minnow pattern, and look Doing at the minnow. size. Beautiful sea run trout. He is magnificent. And mate, the uh I'll just take the net there for you. You're gonna do it. I'll do it solo, I don't trust you. You wanna lose it for me or something. Thank you very much. Um tell us about the Derwin, Andrew. Come I think on. most anglers in Hobart don't really realise that we've got uh, this this sort of fishery right on our doorstep, obviously. There's always greener pastures, but I think for the first two months of the season, you can't beat this, this water here. Oh, well done. That is an absolutely... And that's actually a very, very nice resident. Not quite a sea runner. That's a resident. A resident fish. Well, there you go. So you could catch that, I presume, all year round. Definitely. Well, very fantastic. nice. Fantastic. And that's also good eating? Like the very, runner? very good eating. If you can notice with that fish, it's very well conditioned. It is and well should be nice and, uh, nice and pink inside. Yeah, Hardy, we're yeah, actually sure. doing a bit on sea runners today, not just brown trout. We're looking for sea run trout today, so you might want to pop that one back. I'll go to another spot. Whatever, we're about to run aground here. Yeah. Okay. This is not too bad, mate. We're going all right, aren't we? Going really well. You, uh, you were nervous, let's be honest, before you uh, before we started today. I must admit there was a little bit of pressure put on me this morning, but um, things have started. You are like okay. the proverbial cat coming out of the dairy. At the moment, now. That's another nice little fish, and that, uh, thank you very much. That's another um, a resident fish or a sea run fish, that one, do you reckon? Uh, this one's a resident. Yep. Yeah. And so, by saying resident, what do you actually mean by that? The fish lives here all year round. The, the uh, sea run fish are normally a very, very silver fish and they lose a lot of their spots. Yep. This one here is typical of the colour that you find up in probably Arthur's Lake somewhere. Yep. Got nice dark back, golden sort of uh, olive stomach and uh, generally a freshwater looking trout. The only way to figure out Derwent River sea runners is to get out on the water and give it a go. The boys at Spot On will point you in the right direction. They're most helpful like that. They'll tell you that spinning is the best way of catching a few and early on in the season is the best time of year. That is so true. You are a wise, wise man. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was the Derwent River by day. Spinning up sea run trout. Nick, what did you think? I thought that was fantastic, Andrew. Very, very enjoyable. That proves you don't have to go a long way to catch a nice trout, particularly if you live in the Hobart area. 
And that's our day here, Hardy, but it's not over yet. It's not over yet. Stay with us because after the break, we might head out to sea a little bit. Do we really have to go fishing with James again? Look, I know you don't like him, but I he's don't. very, very good. And we're on Flinders Island, yeah. and when we're here, he shows he, us around. He bosses me about all the time. You can't mm. get a minute to yourself. I know, I know, Andrew. Oh, look, I here know, he is now. Look at the devil. James! Hello, hello Nick, James! Andrew, how are you? Very nice well. To see you. Lovely to see what you. What are you again. doing over here? Well, we uh, we heard that there was something going on at a place called Northeast River. Yeah, we just made it. It's the late winter run of salmon. Out on the point, deeper water, fish this, everywhere. This um, could be construed as one you prepared earlier. I was just sneaking it past you, ready to go for me lunch. It's <laughs> a nice fish, but look, Yeah, you know, oh, it's a kilo salmon. It is. Have a look here on the rocks. There's been a few fish here or up on the point where it's a bit more breezy, and I think you'll have some good fishing. All right. Perfect. Well, this is all very pleasant and nice. This is good. Yeah, a little Isn't bit that? of wind. Remember, don't tangle your line up, Andrew. No worries. I'm going to go fishing. Oh! <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nick's just hooked up. I reckon it took ten casts, and then I had a hook up and lost it. And then Nick had a hook up and lost it, and then all of a sudden, salmon were just chasing our lures in like 50 salmon. Hopefully, we'll show you in a minute. But these are good fish, too. They're not just little cockies. I'm in a bit of strife with the weed here, but. Like these are tiddlers, to... folks. These okay. are pretty good fish. Um, <clears throat> and as Hardy was saying, pretty much throw your lure out, wind it in, one hits, <clears throat> he gets off. One at another couple of turns, he gets off. The point, I guess, here is, is that we're not just blindly fishing uh, anywhere along the bank. The channel comes quite close in here. And there's this fish. Yep. I uh, snapped mine off there, yeah, I saw that. Yeah. I saw that. But there you go. Oh, that's beautiful. Good that an Australian salmon of uh, he's be a good kilo, I guess. Easy a kilo, I'll say, yeah. And uh, you can see that fish beautiful blue green colour, like the water here in peak condition. And he's munched on that. Uh, you can see James has provided uh, his brand new lures here with uh, special rust coloured hooks. No, they're good. They're camouflaged. Yeah. Oh, almost got a hook in the finger there. Oh, that's that's alright, we'll, uh, right. we'll keep going. Yes, we Because will. there were like just. There's plenty more where that came from. Of them. More fishing, less talking. Alright, now I guess what was interesting about this fish, I would take my sunglasses off, but I don't know where to put them. Um, was that I was actually letting the lure drop, cast it out, and obviously you've got to do a little bit of prospecting to find whether the fish are up on top of the water or hanging down deep. And my lure was actually just free falling when the fish picked it up, felt something. And not a bad fish, this one, but um, so it's worthwhile noting that um, you can come to a place like this, the fish can be here, but if you just throw your lure out, wind it back in, throw your lure out, wind it back in you may not catch them because you've actually got to explore the entire water column to find these fish and this is another very nice fish. For your attention just down here, nah, not done yet. If you like, you know, a, a, a sport fish, you go a long way to beat the Australian salmon. This is a good fish. So probably, I might even just try and swim him up over the rock here. And uh, just bear with me, bear with me, bear with me. And there you go. We'll do a real time demonstration, everybody. All right. You ready? Here You're we right. go. Right. All right, hang on. Hang on. You can't cast first. All right, you can't. Shoot. One, two, three. 
cast straight over and tangled me out. No, I have not. All right, so we'll let, oh, letting the lure sink and yeah. no, off. Yeah. And oh. back on again. <laughs> what is James Just doing? ridiculous. James has got out his, uh, <laughs> his coarse fishing rig. <laughs> Oh, dear. But yeah, so that's what we're talking about you know, here at Northeast River. Lobbing it out there, not more than 10 metres, and on. <laughs> <laughs> they're actually, yeah, they're taking it on the way down now, but you don't have enough to wind it. What is interesting, though, I guess, Hardy, is that you could um, you could quite easily drive past here. There's no birds or, yeah, not a lot of surface activity or whatever. I've lost mine, but they were right there. Um, <clears throat> you do need to prospect a bit. Yeah, look, you do, I guess. They're, I think we've fished them off the bottom. Yeah. Because we were letting our lures go down to the bottom here. I mean, it's a beautiful sandy sort of bottom, so yep. you're not going to have to worry no about snags. getting snag. There's not much worried about. Um, and I think we've fished them up, and now we've got them into a, an almost a frenzy type thing in which there's just masses of salmon and big salmon. And it's great fun. Having said that, I'm about not to catch one. Yeah, this is probably the last one. No. Yeah, that's last one. There you go. They're, um, you know, like GT, Giants from Valley? Yep. Up in Queensland. I reckon that you can compare them to those, like, not as a fish, obviously, but what have you got? You've got the GT. I have got the GT. Um, yeah. yeah. That's just an interesting side light, I guess. There you go. Got a little silver trevally. Nice. Like we're saying, activity creates activity. The salmon really started going. The trevally want to know what all the fuss is about. They've turned up. Off he goes. And here's the salmon's there. It's all go. Well, fellas, I reckon the tide's ebbing. Fish are moving out of the river towards the mouth. We haven't had a bite here for, what, five or 10 minutes? I think we should probably go and change our gear up to the big rock and go and catch something bigger. I've got a shell. Now, James. Um, what's that thing you're holding there? Mick, I've got a safety throwing line. You hang on to this end, Yeah. you can chuck it 30 metres. Any chance of chucking it to my hat? Because, uh, your uh, hat is condemned, I think, because you forgot to tie it on. <laughs> you see my piece of mono when I come up here? But no, seriously, surf fishing, rock fishing, particularly off the rocks, is dangerous. You've got to be careful. You need good foot gear, keep a good grip on the rocks, even if a wave comes at you throwing line if somebody goes in and be sensible and be careful you want a good day's fishing not a sprained ankle or somebody going in the water and getting cold all those sort of things you're safety conscious surf fishing's great what about the wind wind's blowing 25 to 30 knots but uh main thing I suppose oh, is, oh sorry Nick I had a bite then uh, is the wind chill factor yeah you, know, you want a good jumper on yeah. but this is all right very, Winter very time, nice we're fishing. This is the big rock at Northeast hey, River. Hey, 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 oh, hey, hey, yeah. Hey, hey, hey. I've got a bite. Yeah, I got Andrew's one. Andrew's got a bite. Right. I was fishing with some bait with a Flinders Island surf rod. Do as the locals do, do as the locals do. And it was just sitting out there, pretty sandy, sort of gravelly bottom here. And. Oh, oh, oh. I have got another Northeast River salmon. Nice little fish, not as big as uh, as the others, but that's all right. It's a start, and uh, we'll keep going. Windy. It's quite windy, isn't it? Quite windy. See my hat out there? Yeah. yeah. I know. You just keep bringing that up to excuse your hair, don't that's you? That's my hair. Yeah. Oh, Pretty good. <laughs> the nutty professor, folks. The nutty professor. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Cool Island Adventures and James Luddington, you won't be disappointed. Those salmon were biting in winter, but are there all year round. Yes, all we did was spin with lures. Now, when at Flinders Island, stay at the Ferno Tavern. 
it's a great place to escape James. Yeah. Yes, that's right. Island adventures. James Ludington, whether it's big tuna and bits and pieces out wide or salmon, you've done it again, albeit a little bit breezy this time. Good place for a breezy day, safe inside the river, nice fish, a bit blowy up on the rock, a few more nice fish. I think the important thing today was we picked the tide, Nick, once the tide turned and started to run out, the fish went quiet, so consult your tide table yep. and catch fish. What did you think of Andrew's performance today? The shell yeah. or the small fish. Yeah. He seems to have an ability with those little ones, I must say. We'll see how he goes next week, folks. See you then. I'm actually just here.